Many people believe debt is evil, money is controversial, and a little economic uncertainty signals the beginning of a recession. But my next guest today says this is not always so and has come up with a new set of rules to embrace while dealing with the current state of our economy. Robert Kiyosaki, a financial education advocate as well as best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, joins us today to talk about his new book titled Conspiracy of the Rich, The Eight New Rules of Money. Robert, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the time. So the eight new rules of money, this sounds very, very intriguing. When did the rules change? Well, Conspiracy of the Rich is about how the rich took over the uh, Federal Reserve Bank and they changed the rules. In 1971, President Nixon took us off the gold standard. Once he did that, without permission of Congress and without permission of you and I, mm -hmm. and at that point the Federal Reserve and the Treasury could print money uncontrollably throughout the world. So this crisis today is the U.S. dollar is toxic. It's going down in value as they print more and more of it. So that's when the rules really began to change. Again, it was 1971. And so the rules were rewritten, and you say it's important now to understand the new rules so right. that we can make money in this climate. The first one you say that I thought was really interesting is that money is knowledge. Right. Let me go back again. You know, most people say save money. Well, it's no longer money after 1971. So today, if you're saving money, when bonds are paying zero and the Fed is printing trillions, saving money is really bad advice. So, but everybody's now saving, which is the worst time to save. So you can lose, if you had bought gold in 1980, you would have lost money. You can buy real estate and lose money. You can buy stocks and lose money. So it's not the stock or the asset. It's knowledge that makes you rich or poor because a true investor can make a lot of money when the market's up, will make more money when the market's down. For like right now, this is my best time ever, bad economies. So the, so the secret is you've done your research, you've yes. done your homework, you know where you should be putting your money. Well, it's common sense that markets don't always go up, you know, and most people buy, hold, and pray for the long term. Right. That's insanity and this volatility. All right, so knowledge, inform yourself, and that's yes. how you become powerful. The second rule I thought was very interesting, which is the need for speed. Yes. Well, today you can make money at this rate of speed. Today we have 19-year-old kids you know, like Facebook and MySpace. They're billionaires today, and old guys my age don't have anything. So, I mean, if a kid at 19 can become a billionaire and a guy like me is still trying to make 10,000, there's something wrong. So the speed of processing data, information, and business has gone up at exponential levels. So there's more opportunity today, especially if you're web savvy, you're 18 years old and know the web. Right. But a guy, old guy like me, I'm in trouble. Right. You know? And like you said earlier, if you went into a McDonald's That's and right. asked for a burger and fries and it... It took too long, you'd be out the door. Right. McDonald's, I walk in there and I say, I want a Big Mac and fries, and boom, there it is. <laughs> but if I wait five minutes, I'm gone. Right. Makes perfect sense. Now, you also say that it's important now that everyone learn the language of money. What is that language? Well, in the Conspiracy of the Rich, I cover we don't have financial education in schools. The question is, is that an accident? Language is simply vocabulary. When somebody says, it takes money to make money, that's not true. It takes words. So when I invest in real estate, I'm using a different vocabulary. When I'm in the stock market, it's different vocabulary. When I'm in commodities, it's different vocabulary. Give me an example of some of these words. Well, when I'm in, the, when I'm in real estate, a, co a common term is cap rate. But in the stock market, it's called PE. And so if you don't speak the same language, it's like you and I trying to speak Japanese and Chinese. Right. And it just, nobody understands you. So money is very simply vocabulary, which goes back to rule number one. Knowledge is the new money. Absolutely. All right. Now, I, I want to ask you some questions about what you think about our current economic situation. Because, you know, the Federal Reserve, as you said, is, is printing money. Is this going to help us? Well, it's, you have to watch the Federal Reserve. In Conspiracy for the Rich, we have to be careful right now. There was two kinds of depressions. First part of conspiracy is history. There was the American Depression, which was a depression. But there was a German Depression, which was hyperinflation. It looks like right now the U.S. is going for hyperinflation. So knowledge is power, knowing if, if you think Bernanke is going to keep printing money, you should have one strategy. If you think it's going to stop printing money, have another strategy. So is that where your money is, the smart money is on the fact that we're going to see some inflation? I'm betting heavily on that. And mm -hmm. also, I, I like real estate because I can use debt. Right. And a lot of people, debt is a bad four-letter word. But if you're smart, you can use debt as leverage to get rich. And if, like you said, there's going to be hyperinflation, that bodes well if you own real estate. That's correct. But also, if, if Bernanke raises interest rates, it crashes the stock market. 
So that's why knowledge is the new money. You don't just sit there, buy, hold, and pray, and you know, hope your broker is going to call you. Absolutely. You know. But you know, the, the the stock market is slowly inching its way up. What do you think about that? The reason it's inching, inching its way up is because the bond market is paying zero. And so you have all of this cash. Like there is more cash sitting on the sidelines today. It's got no place to go. Mm -hmm. So it has to go into a so-called higher risk because so in the stock market. Unfortunately, as you know, the market was down considerably today. Volume is tapering off and energy is going out of it. So this idea of buy, hold, and pray is a bad idea simply because, again, after 1971, Nixon took us off the gold standard. And we have to watch the games the ultra-rich are playing with money. Right. The eight new rules about playing by the rules of the rich, not the poor and middle class. <laughs> That's right. We <laughs> want to know what the rich are doing, That's right? Correct. That's <laughs> we correct. We want to emulate That's the correct. rich. So what, what do you, what's your advice in this current economic situation? You're looking at hyperinflation. You're thinking that's possibly, possibly yes. coming forward. What else are you predicting that people should keep their eye on? Well, you, you have to ask yourself, if there's hyperinflation, what do I do? Mm -hmm. If there's a depression, like the FDR type thing, what do I do then? So I was a military officer in Vietnam. So always, are you hedging your bets right now? I always got you got to play it both ways. Right, right. I said it's, it's insane to think it always goes one direction. Right. Markets go up and markets come down. Yeah. And I think the person to watch is the Fed right now, and they're the ones that have set up this crisis because the dollar is toxic. The U.S. dollar is no no longer money; it's a currency. Right. All uh, right. A, ABC News Now. Good to know.